Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the Path to Exile podcast. Today we have a new style video that I have yet to even try, and that is today's deck tech. Uh, so there's a few different cards I've been wanting to brew around. I never have gotten a chance to, and I finally decided to sit down and see what I could come up with. So, there's a, a little a little doozy of a card that recently came out in, I believe, Ravnica Allegiance, named Persistent Petitioners. That's right, we're talking about a Persistent Petitioners deck. But it's not your average Persistent Petitioners deck. Wow, try saying Persistent Petitioners ten times fast. Uh, this deck is more of a squirrel deck is really its ultimate goal is to become a squirrel deck than it is a persistent petitioner deck. So let's get into the meat of it. The number one most important card in the entire deck is persistent petitioners. Who would have guessed it? It is a win condition by itself. In this deck, I'll be running 33 pers persistent petitioners. Whew, still getting hard to say. The commander for this deck is not a mono blue commander. We're actually going to be splashing in a little bit of green. I'll get to the reasoning behind that in just a second. Our commander is Tatiova Benthic Druid. She is three, one green and one blue. For a legendary creature, Merfolk, she is a three, three. And she says, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life and draw a card. Pretty solid card draw. Uh, it's landfall with a uh, draw engine. Super cheap commander. Uh, I think I picked up mine for like 15 cents. So definitely pick her up. I mean, she's she's a super versatile commander if you need something, something Simic. So uh, the second most important card of the deck. Let's get to it. It's a little doozy called Nantuko Shrine. It's out of Odyssey. It's an enchantment uh, for two green and a generic mana. Whenever a player plays a spell, that player puts X11 one, one green squirrel creature tokens into play, where X is the number of cards in all graveyards with the same name as that spell. That's right. You're going to be milling yourself. And it's going to be fun. The problem with green and blue is that there isn't a ton of tutors for enchantments. So we're going to be running long-term plans. Long-term plans is an amazing card for decks like Narset or anything that really wants to worry about what the, is on the top of your library. Uh, what long-term plans is, 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 is an instant for one blue and two generic. It says, search your library for a card, shuffle your library, then put that card third from the top. To go along with this specific card, we're going to be running things like Brainstorm and running things like Ponder. This deck is also packed full of really fun cards that we never get to play in Commander. The reason you never get to play them is because they say these words same name. I'm talking about cards like Bifurcate. It is a rare out of Marcadian Masks for a green and three colorless. You get a sorcery. It says, search your library for a copy of target creature card in play and put that card into play. So, you search your library for a Persistent Petitioners. Much like that card, we're talking about Pack Hunt. Pack Hunt is the same casting cost. It's a green and three generic. Uh, it is a sorcery, and it says search your library for up to three copies of target creature, reveal them, and put them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. This deck is actually quite consistent with just having uh, the mill strategy. The only time it really becomes a squirrel deck is when you're able to get 
Nantuko Shrine into play. The deck also runs a bunch of land ramp spells, as well as lands that fetch other lands. It's not running much in the way of actual fetch lands, uh, because I don't feel like paying for fetch lands. Other cards that do the same name effect are cards such as Mask of the Mimic. It's not exactly a one-for-one -one comparison of same name because it doesn't actually say same name on the card. It says, sacrifice a creature, search your library for any copy of target creature card, and put it into play. This is for a single blue and it's an instant, so it's a great way of, you know, pulling out a blocker if you need a blocker. On top of running things like land ramp spells, we're also running a little fun enchantment called Mana Breach. Mana Breach is a blue and two colorless, and it says whenever a player plays a spell, that player returns a land he or she controls to its owner's hand. So what you do is you haven't played your land for the turn, you're out of cards to play, but you really like to draw your card off of Tatiova. But this is in play. So you play a spell, it returns a land to your hand, you put that land into play, and you draw a card. Those two cards together are a great draw engine. The deck is also running a few cards that allow you to bring things back from the graveyard. This is great because if you have one in hand, you decide to mill yourself, you basically get to pick whatever is in the top 13 cards of your library by milling yourself and playing something like an Eternal Witness or playing something like a Reclaim. Uh, I feel like Reclaim is one of those cards that isn't played enough. Uh, it is an instant for a single green. It says, put target card from your graveyard on top of your library. You can do this at the end of someone's turn. It's awesome. I love it. It's one of my favorite recursion spells. I personally like it better than Regrowth or even Revive because it is an instant. You can get something back and depending on the way your deck is built, you may need some way of drawing said card, but at instant speed, that's just value. With milling yourself a whole lot and having your commander be a landfall style commander, it's pretty smart to play things like Splendid Reclamation. Splendid Reclamation is a sorcery for a green and three colorless. It says return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So say you mill yourself for, even in the turn you play this, say you have eight petitioners out on the field. You mill yourself for 26, and then you play Splendid Reclamation. Maybe a quarter of the cards that you milled yourself were lands? You then get, say, six to eight land cards come into play, tapped, and you get to draw six to eight cards and gain six to eight life for four mana. That's land ramp, that's life gain, that's card draw. It's fantastic. I love Splendid Reclamation. This deck is a little bit weak when it comes to creature removal. Because of it, it is running things like Propaganda. Propaganda is the perfect pillow fort card to allow this deck enough time to start running. If you don't know what propaganda is, for a blue and two colorless is an enchantment that says creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each creature he or she controls that's attacking you. So say they're attacking with three creatures, they have to pay six mana, which is two mana each for one of those creatures. It's a great way of deterring people from attacking you for a little while while you set up. The deck is running also Zendikar Resurgent. It isn't necessarily for the doubled mana, which is, I mean, the doubled mana is great, but it is an enchantment, which means it's a little on the more difficult side to get rid of. Uh, you could use something like Beast Whisperer, but I prefer an enchantment uh, for its second effect, which says whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. 
Uh, this is an enchantment, cost two green and five generic. The reason this deck needs this sort of an effect is because it's running 35 creatures, which is a large number of creatures for a typical commander deck. Artifact wise, it's a little on the light side. It's actually only running four artifacts, which are Druidic Satchel. I love this card. It is three mana for an artifact. For two and tap, it says reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put a 1-1 green sapperling creature token onto the battlefield. If it's a land card, put that card onto the battlefield under your control. Mind you, it does not say tapped. Uh, if it's a non-creature non-land card, you gain two life. So there's a whiff there. Uh, I love this card. It's a great way of possibly giving yourself land ramp, possibly drawing card, gaining life with Tatiova. Uh, giving yourself a possible blocker uh, so you can set up a little bit longer. Uh, it's a great card that will give you uh, a sacrifice fodder for uh, cards like Mask of the Mimic. Other artifacts include things such as Locket of Yesterdays. It is a one mana artifact. It says spells you play cost one less to play for each card with the same name as that spell in your graveyard. So if you have one Persistent Petitioner in your graveyard, all of your Persistent Petitioners cost one blue mana. That is value. The deck is also running the one obligatory Soul Ring. And finally, a Coat of Arms. The Coat of Arms is great because you can use it with either Persistent Petitioners or the Squirrels you would be generating with Nantuko Shrine. Because we're running Tatiova as our commander, we're going to be running Simic Growth Chamber, which is a bounce land that says when it enters the battlefield, return a land you control to its owner's hand. It doesn't care if it's already been used or not, it doesn't care if it's tapped. Uh, Simic Growth Chamber does come into play tap, so I do suggest you you use your uh, mana first. But yeah, it's great. It bounces a land to your hand. Uh, it comes into play if Tatio Tatiova is already in play. You get to draw a card. You then get a land into your hand for the next, next turn. Or if you are running this next card, you could definitely play a your land a second time. And that is Terrain Generator. Terrain Generator is a land, and it has the abilities of tap, add one colorless mana to your mana pool. That's great. I love lands that create mana. And its second ability is for two and tap, put a basic land card from your hand into play tapped. Terrain Generator does not come into play tapped, so you can use it the turn it comes out. It's great. It is super underplayed. I never see this card anywhere. I was torn on if I wanted to run Seedborn Muse and Intruder Alarm in this deck. Intruder Alarm, if you don't know, is an enchantment for a blue and two generic. It says creatures don't untap during their controller's untap steps. Whenever a creature comes into play, untap all creatures. So it's great with Persistent Petitioners, so you tap out all of your Persistent Petitioners to uh, mill somebody down, and then you play a Persistent Petitioners, it untaps all of your Persistent Petitioners, and you can tap them all down again. The great thing about Persistent Petitioner is that you can use an advisor the turn that it comes down. Seaborn Muse is a somewhat of a similar effect in that it untaps all permanents you control, but it does it during each other player's untap step. So I feel like you would get more use in theory out of the Seedborn Muse. Uh, you could do really good burst effects, I feel, with the Intruder Alarm. But at the end of the day, I feel like Seedborn Muse will just give you more value over time. But that's it. That's the deck. Tell me what you think. What would you add? What would you take out? By the way, we just started up a Patreon. If you feel like kicking back to us, link is in the description. But yeah, that's it, guys. I hope you have a fantastic day. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And 
I'll talk to you next time.